Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Okay, we've got Chris Billum Smith, um, who is challenging Lawrence Acoli for the WBO Cruiserweight title. That's coming up this Saturday, and it clashes with the uh, Maurizio Lara Lee Wood rematch. I'll be going for that particular fight, but I can't say, I can't deny that this isn't an interesting fight, too. And But there is always a caveat with Lawrence Acoli because as was shown in his last fight with um, David Light. Even though in his career he's sometimes flattered to deceive, you know, I'm thinking of the fights with Dylan Prasovic and Christoph Glowacki, where he, he scored exciting KOs. Nevertheless, overall, his career, I mean, he, this guy could bore an arsehole into a wooden horse. He is so crushingly dull. And yet, um, as the WBO champ, uh, he's 30 years of age now, so he's absolutely in his prime. He's six foot five, 82 and a half inch reach, and yet he's just dull to watch. You'd think he would dominate other cruiserweights. And his last fight with David Light, I mean, Jesus Christ, you know, you were losing the will to live watching that rubbish. Um, and that was his big coming out party as, you know, a, a Boxer's a new signing, because Boxer have signed him and Joshua Boazzi, in uh, both former matchroom fighters. Suddenly they're, you know, proclaiming them to be the face of Sky Boxing. And yet both both Boazzi and Akoli gave appallingly dull performances. Very flat, uninspired, drab performances. Um, so, is this going to be any more entertaining? Because boxing is, after all, entertainment. This one against Chris Billum Smith. Now, Billum Smith him, himself is not a small cruiserweight. He's six foot three. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, six foot three, 32 years old. I was quite surprised when I looked that up. And yeah, he's 32. He's older than I thought. So Billum Smith has uh, 17 wins and one defeat. The defeat was to Richard Riakpour. Um It's a 10 round split decision back in 2019. So it's a long time ago. Riakpour himself is a very, very good fighter. Um, and since then, he's gone on a bit of a streak where he's won uh, Commonwealth and European honours. And I think he was British... I think he was British champ as well at one point. I can't remember the order in which they came, but um, but he's won the lot except for the world title. Now, Akoli, like I say, six foot five. I mean, very heavyweight dimensions. Um, and there has been talk of him eventually ending up at heavyweight, but he's 19 wins with 14 knockouts and no defeats, no draws. And so you look at this on paper, you think, you know, something's got to give. This is going to be really entertaining. But the Hackney man, who is, which is Akoli, uh, again, you know, he's just flattered to deceive and he's got to give a good performance. If he goes in there and smashes up Billum Smith, who is a viable contender, a really you know, good fighter in his own right, then he will have made the statement that he needs. Because if, if this is another drab performance, then I, I don't know what I mean, Sky must be. They'll be regretting forking out that money, allowing uh, Shalom, Ben Shalom and, and Boxer to sign this guy because he's. He'll be part of the Who Needs Him club. Not because he's not just because he's he's very difficult to beat, and he is very difficult to beat, but also because you know no one's going to tune in. You know, now Billum Smith, if he by the way, this fight is in Bournemouth. It's at the Vitality Stadium in Bournemouth, which is uh, Billum Smith's home home city. Um, if he wins, people are probably going to heave a, a sigh of relief and say, you know, "Thank goodness!" You know, even if it's a boring fight and he wins, people will cut Billum Smith some slack. Because they'll say, well, you know, Akoli's never in good fights, you know, and now, but they would expect Billum Smith to do something with the belt afterwards. Um, but uh, Akoli, you know, I think there's a lot resting on this defence of his title. He won the title from Christoph Glowacki, uh, that was in 2021, stopped him in six rounds, then there was the Dylan Prasovic three round KO, then he had a couple of 12, 12 rounders, the light, or, yeah, two, two 12 rounders. Who was the other guy, Mikko or someone? Sizlak? Sizlak? Something like that, the guy's name was. That was a 12-round... Um, it wasn't a shutout. I think Cieslak pinched about three rounds, but it was not very inspired. And then then you had the David Light snoozer. Um, but the David Light fight is the only one that Akoli has had in the last year, whereas Billum Smith, um, he's also... He, no, he hasn't, actually. That was a back end of last year, wasn't it? The Ar Armend... What was that guy's name? Zerjaz or something? Zerzai? Zerzai? Uh, God knows, I can't remember the guy's name. But I know it was a, a five-round KO anyway. Um, and it was a, a very picturesque knockout. 
uh, and the guy, this this uh, Armand fella, um, who I, I think was uh, was he Croatian or from Kosovo or someone like that, he came to fight and he was you know putting it on Chris, and that was very that was very telling because Chris got him out of there with a picturesque knockout, but uh, he was giving it large and he was he was wasn't going anywhere. He came to win, so this is Zezai fella Zezai. Zor, Zor, I don't know what the bloody hell his name. <laughs> we'll call him Armand. All right, he did. Re, he did reveal a few interesting things, and that is that if you put it on uh, Chris Billum Smith, he can look ruffled. He can look a little bit unnerved, and he's not the only guy to do it because Chris, um, Chris, prior to that in July of last year, had a, a really good fight with Isaac Chamberlain, and that, he won a twelve-round decision. I thought it was deservedly so. Isaac was very competitive, won rounds, but I thought Chris, because Isaac's not that big a cruiser, and Isaac has also fought a Coley and was widely outpointed as well. He was actually flawed and widely outpointed in another boring, boring as hell fight. That was some years ago now. That was sort of 20, I want to say it was like 2018 or something. That's five years ago now. Um, but Billum Smith, you know, against Chamberlain, the size seemed to matter. Um but there have been occasions, even the first Tommy McCarthy fight with Chris Billum Smith, where he's had very uncomfortable moments. Not that he's been badly buzzed and on rubber legs and all the rest of it, but he, he is Chris Billum Smith is the type of fighter who likes to fight two orders in a very conventional, sort of structured, conventional way. Um, he does everything well. There's nothing outlandish about what he does. There's nothing, um, nothing out, out of the textbook, uh, sort of that isn't in the textbook. Uh, he's he's very very conventional fighter and very good. Uh, Akoli is pretty much the same. Well, when he decides to fight and not grab and hold and mess around and maul and wrestle and all that business, um, but he can, as I just said, he can he can do all this. Not so much dark arts as boring arts, but he can get involved in the wrestling matches and you know uses his size to sort of. Bore the you know bore his way through rounds, but nevertheless win them. Whereas Billum Smith doesn't seem to like doing that. He seems to much prefer to um, uh, to keep things um, to order. Uh, and I I just wonder if size in this fight will matter, because I don't see this as I'll be pleasantly surprised. Put it that way. If this is an entertaining fight. I think it will have little pockets of activity like a lot of Akoli's fights. I think Akoli will be perturbed by Billum Smith's own size and will choose to box very, very conservatively, as he always does. I mean, against David Light, he was in against a much smaller man, but he still there was still a lot of messing around and no real uh, structure to what was being done. It was all a case of punch, grab, hold, lean on the guy, punch again, score again, score a few points. There's the round for me. Against Billum Smith, I think this could sort of degenerate very quickly into a, a bit of a maul. But I think the one who's going to have probably more more trouble with the opponent's size, long term, I'm talking over the, the entire 12 rounds, is probably going to be Billum Smith. Because I think as, as Billum Smith becomes frustrated, I think a Coley might suddenly come out of his shell a bit and might start to string together a few... Um, dare I say, a few decent combinations and actually soften up Chris. Um, again, this is it. This is in Bournemouth. So Chris is going to have the crowd cheering him on. Um, I don't think he'll be overawed. I think he'll be inspired rather than intimidated by the reception. But uh, it's the going is going to get tough. And for that reason, I mean, you talk about who controls the range, who's got the better footwork. <sighs> I think, again, I think it's going to be messy. I think it probably, I don't know, it'll be 50-50. Who, who controls the range? I don't know. Who's got, who's going to have the better footwork? Um, I would say Chris probably would, when he can stay away from those octopus arms of a Coley. Um, but generally speaking, I think a Coley is going to use that reach and height to jab his way in and then do his little mauling routine. Uh, I mean, they're both orthodox fighters, aren't they? So, yeah, I, I'm struggling to see this as being an entertaining fight. I hope I'm wrong. Don't get me wrong, I want to be wrong, but 
No, I, do, I think that in the last third of this fight, Lawrence Acoli will probably start to come out of himself a little bit and Chris will start to tire. And when Chris tires, it's not that he comes apart at the seams, he just tends to, um, he ten tends to get taken off his game plan. Now, the, the other thing is that um, Shane McGuigan has trained them both until recently. He trained Lawrence as well as Chris. And Chris and Lawrence are actually, I think, quite good friends. He's still with Chris. Lawrence is, is now trained by, um, was it Sugar Hill? Yeah, Sugar Hill, isn't it? So, and this is only his second fight with Sugar Hill. You would think that would work to Chris's, to Chris's um, advantage. After, certainly after half of the fight, I can see Chris leading. Maybe after eight rounds, after two thirds of the fight, I can see Chris ahead. But I think Lawrence will probably come on strong in the final four rounds, the final third of the fight, and pinch a possibly controversial decision. I think Lawrence Acoli wins this fight close. It might be unanimously close. It could be a split or a majority. But I think Lawrence will hold on to his WBO cruiserweight title via arguable decision. Let's put it that way. And last week with Loma and uh, Devin Haney, we had uh, controversy, which I thought was blown a bit out of proportion. I did think Loma won that fight, but I didn't think it was a flat-out robbery that some people are claiming. I didn't agree with that at all. But this one, I think this is going to be contentious. And I think Akoli will will outpoint Chris Billum smith around the sort of 115, 113, maybe 116, 112. That might be pushing it a bit. Will either guy score a knockdown? I'm going to stick my neck out and say I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the one, the person who will be hurt more in the fight will be Billum Smith. Because I think Akoli, when he lets his heavy hands go, he is effective. He can be very effective. And I think Billum Smith is going to struggle badly with the bigger man. Akoli, you know, will he, he won't struggle with Billum Smith. He'll choose to fight very, very conservatively. There's a difference. He'll... he'll High behind the a few jabs, be very sort of reticent to get stuck in. But I think gradually, certainly over the last third of the fight, he will begin to put it on Chris and pinch the decision. But Chris, in terms of you know an opponent who's two inches taller than he is, because he's six foot three and has a longer, even longer reach than him, I think he's going to struggle with a Coley's size. Even if a Coley's not doing much, trying to open him up with the jab and fire the combinations, I think it's going to be very difficult for him. But I think he can he can be ahead after after the halfway mark. I just think in the second half of the fight, maybe the last third, Lawrence Coley takes over and wins a decision. So what do you think? You leave your comments below. I want to I want to hear them. Um, I hope I'm wrong that this is an exciting fight and not the rather drab affair that I'm sort of dreading. But you never know, do you? Um, yeah, leave your comments below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you knew if you could help us out by subscribing that would be a big help and of course hit the like button that helps us out as well looking forward to reading your comments as always and um, yeah bye for now